it's news time. Information is power. The current. The news headline. Nigerians raise alarm over a late return of notorious police unit SARS in Anambra. According to some Nigerians on social media, operatives of Akuzu SARS in Anambra have started arresting innocent people illegally. A notorious unit of the Nigerian police force which was disbanded last year after the NSAS protest, the special anti-robbery squad SARS has allegedly uh, been review- revived in Anambra state where some Nigerians have claimed uh, sought to be the case. SARS was known for their notorious brutality, extrajudicial killings and human rights abuses. According to some Nigerians on social media, operatives of Akuzu SARS in Anambra have started arresting innocent people illegally yet again. The Akuzu SARS in the Uye local government area of the state was dreaded for the wanton killing of young Nigerians. The Amnesty Nigeria and Amnesty International had described Akuzu SARS cell as the most notorious in Nigeria because of human rights violations and abuse. Corpses, numbering about 35, were on January 19, 2013 discovered floating on the Azu River at the boundary between Anambra and Enugu State in Amansi or Kanoth local government area of Anambra State. A report by the International Society for Civil Liberties and the Rule of Law indicted SARS for killing and dumping the corpses in the river. A Twitter user at Von Bismarck narrated how a young guy who disappeared last month was recently found at the office of the defunct SARS in Akuzu. He said, last month I was called about a guy who was abducted by some men at Inewi. Information was sketchy. The reason for the abduction was also unknown. The search had been on, but to no avail. Just today, the parents were told to go and check at Akuzu SARS. Lo and build is there. Akuzu SARS is back. The facility is back in use. If you are looking for anyone abducted in Southeast, is there. It is filled with large concentration of boys without charge as usual. The daily killing in that station is back. Spread the word the killers are back. And reacting to the tweets, some Nigerians confirmed the notorious police unit has truly been revived on a very low key. Supporters of Mr. Kano seeking entry to the Federal High Court in Abuja were met by a pro-Nigerian group which accused the former of supporting Mr. Kano and his desire for Nigeria's breakup. The former was speaking to journalists outside the court accusing the government of injustice in Mr. Kano's trial. They, they accused the federal government of secretly following Mr. Kano before his arrest uh, in Kenya, and they also claimed the government had barred Mr. Kano's foreign lawyer and a few of his followers from, uh, uh, from appearing in court. While the pro Biafra group was addressing the journalist, the pro Nigerian group approached them with placards uh, bearing various inscriptions. Iako led court by the Nigerian government for charges bordering on terrorism. He was arrested in June, Kenya, and repatriated to Nigeria. The Kanu's lawyer had actually lamented being locked out of court, and um, the lawyer, uh, Bruce Finn, that is the American lawyer, uh, had actually uh, you know, threatening to take up the case to the international court. We are on Wednesday addressing journalists outside the court's premises. The visibly infuriated lawyers said that they have lost trust in the ability of the court to deliver justice and would therefore take the case to an international court. I do not think we are going to continue with this court and most likely we are going to take it out from here. By the virtue of what transpired today, I do not think we still trust in the ability of the court to deliver justice in this case, one of the lawyers, known as Ifani Ijiofo, had said, complaining that today was the fifth time I was told I could not enter the courtroom, despite the court's uh, previous order that in Amdekano could have access to any three persons he wanted to. Another lawyer, Bruce Finn, lamented. It is clear five times that they are targeting me in particular, and that is the reason why this proceeding cannot transpire today. I am here to tell Nigerians that I am taking this to the International Tribunal. It is clear that the Nigerian courts are compromised, Finn added. Following the refusal by the operatives of the Department of State Services, DSS, to allow some of them access into the courtroom, some other lawyers who were within the courtroom staged a workout. Consequently, Justice Winter Iyako had actually adjourned the case now to January 19, 
2022 that the governors ain't bothered about possible conflicts that may mar the Anambra governorship, governorship election, but are deeply concerned about how to take political power by all means by winning the Anambra governorship seats by hook or crook. Therefore, the right group expressed con consternation that since July, that the leadership of the IPOB was allegedly kidnapped by the Nigerian government from Kenya and brought back to Nigeria to continue his trial for an alleged treasonable felony for his role in the championing the campaign for self-determination in the southeast of Nigeria. The elected leaders of the south, uh, eastern, southeast uh, of Nigeria, that is the Igbo-speaking nationality, have yet to concretely convince the president to open the IPOB and remove a ruinous tag of being uh, a terrorist group slammed on the self-proclaimed unharmed IPOB. Uriwa said that instead uh, of opting for peaceful negotiations and the adoption of non-kinetic steps by the federal government to douse the rising tension created by the de detention of the leader of the IPOB, Mazi Inamdekanu, the federal government and the southeast governors have largely adopted bellicose and confrontational military strategies to confront a situation that could have been resolved through peaceful and constructive means. It said that the recent moves by the federal government to militarize a number of states, with the elections barely a few days away and the threats to call out the people of the southeast of Nigeria, on a week-long sit at home protest made by the IPOB, is an unambiguous signal that the election in a number of states would be characterized by, bl by bloodbath, which is what the right group is asking all and sundry to avert. The right group recalled that President Muhammad Buhari had ordered a massive deployment of security agents in the Anambra states to ensure that under no circumstances will anything be allowed to stop the elections from taking place peacefully. The police had on, had on October 14th announced that it would deploy 34,587 personnel to Anambra states to ensure peace during the poll, even as the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abuba Kamalami, had earlier hinted that the federal government was considering imposing a state of emergency in Anambra to ensure peaceful conduct of the poll. Also, the IPOB had declared a one-week sit at home protest across the Southeast states, state, starting from November 5, the eve of the governorship election in Anambra states. Also, the INEC had said that its commission is prepared. The commission had so far recruited and mobilized about 25,000 ad hoc staff that would man the 5,720 police units in the southeast. Our preparations are on course, even with all the challenges we are facing, such as the attacks on our state office on May 23rd and the seat at home order, which is eating into our preparations. But we are doing our best to ensure that we overcome these challenges and we can only urge the public to remain law abiding in order to achieve the desired electoral success in the state, he said. The Apex Igbo Sociocultural Group had therefore appealed uh, to the indigenous people of Biafra to revisit their declaration of uh, a, a seat at home order for the one week during which the Anambra State Governorship election we hold.